Welcome, MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Payson, and I'm honored to have first-time guest of the show, Tanner Hall, on the show. Tanner, welcome. Luke, the honor's mine, man. I even quit my training session a little early to be on here for you. Well, that that, that makes me very excited. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, I'm sure you'll make up for it to be ready for your for your match. We wouldn't want you to shortchange training, but I really appreciate it. It's it's a true honor to have you on the show. Um, you're known in the Pittsburgh area. You have a ton of grappling, wrestling, BJJ experience. Um, you don't have any MMA fights, and that's why you haven't been on yet. But it's super exciting because 247 Fighting Championships is launching the Sprawl in the Berg, which is inside cage, BJJ submission-only matches. Super exciting. You're going to be in the debut version of that, Sprawl in the Berg 1, uh, which is going to be July um, right before Braunenberg 17, this is going to be Braunenberg 1 at Monroeville Convention Center. Uh, let's jump in, talk about it. What does it feel like for you to get this match, match up versus Jacob Lowry, who's a known collegiate wrestler, MMA fighter, both at the amateur and then pro level. He's an undefeated MMA uh, fighter. He's also from a big-time gym in Pittsburgh, just like you are. The Mad Factory, you're from Stout Pittsburgh. Let's talk about it. It's an incredible matchup. What are your thoughts coming into that? BJ, Man, I, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, they don't call them the hammer squad for, for no reason, right? Everybody at the Matt factory, they're hammers. And, and that's what intrigues me so much. I mean, Jake, a, a collegiate wrestler, right? You said it. Um, you know, I, the way I see it, Jake's got great, great wrestling and uh, his jujitsu is pretty good. And I think I got great re or great jujitsu and, and my wrestling is pretty good. So the matchup here, man, it, it couldn't be set up more more for the fans, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're both going to go at each other. We're both looking for submissions. Um, it's And we're both big dudes. And, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, at the 185-pound division, you guys are about as, yeah, as big, tall, thick guys for the, for the weight class, kind of the, I guess. Um, Luke, don't. Yeah. Luke, Luke, don't give me a heart attack. It's 195. I got to cut too much anyways. <laughs> my, brain's in MMA, my brain's in MMA mode. I've got to remember JJ has more ranges. You almost ran out of the interview to get on the, the assault <laughs> yeah. bike. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, shit. Go back down to the gym. I can't give up these minutes. <laughs> I can't give up these minutes. Okay. Well, good. 195, as you were saying, big guys, a yeah. lot of excitement. Let's talk, though, because you said the way you see it, you're great at BJJ, good at wrestling. He's obviously great at wrestling, good at BJJ. What has made you great at BJJ? What's your experience with BJJ? When did you start training? Um, obviously, you train at Stout. Have you always trained at Stout? What's it like training at Stout? And then just because I love running together as many questions as I possibly can, um, <laughs> what what sort of experience do you have in competitive BJJ? It's hard to find records for things like Naga or any of those type tournaments. So let's, let's talk about your BJJ experience. Yeah. So um, I, I like to be as active as possible. I mean, my last match, it was over in Cincinnati uh, on the limitless card um, where I gave a, a front naked choke to a guy in 23 seconds or 33 seconds. So, um, you know, not too much, not too much competition time, but, uh, this year, but, um, I like to stay really active. Um, I think it was 2021. I took third in the world at the worlds in, uh, in no gi, but, um, I mean, I, I've been competing since I was a white belt and it's kind of a, yeah, I know you just threw a bunch of questions at me and I'm probably not going to answer half of them, but I'll just take you through my, through my BJJ story. So, uh, believe it or not, um, at my height, uh, I stopped looking at the scale when I was 282 pounds. So I was just this like big slob, right? So I found a CrossFit gym and the door on the right was CrossFit. The door on the left was Jiu Jitsu. And so like, I'd be doing CrossFit and I was always interested in like peeking through the door and peeking through the window at, at Jiu Jitsu, at the Jiu Jitsu side. I've always been an MMA fan. And, um, you know, my, my brother, my dad were, were avid UFC fans, always watched it. So I, I had a, I had an interest, but what was cool was the, the sole owner of the jujitsu side was part owner mm. of the CrossFit side. So he'd come over and coach and, and I'll never forget it. Uh, he had one of his jujitsu students come over and coach. He was all CrossFit certified and everything. Uh, Matt Wheeler, he's four foot, nothing, 120 pounds soaking wet. 
So we get done with a CrossFit workout and Matt's like, Hey man, you, you want to go over and roll? And again, this is like 282 Tanner. 282. <laughs> and so, so I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but like, I, I'm, I'm double your weight and, and twice your height. Like I'm going to smash you, man. <laughs> and he played, he played possum so well. He's like, yeah, I just like to test my skills and, and whatnot. So let's, let's go over and roll. And I, you know, he had to teach me the slap bump. Uh, so, so we slap bump in a five minute roll. I think it was like, you know, 45 seconds. I was gassed, like just completely out of breath. He tapped me 12 times in five minutes. And so I quit CrossFit that day. I joined jujitsu and that was out, that was out actually in uh, Manchester, Connecticut at uh, Bushido Jiu Jitsu in Manchester. So that's where I got my start, um, in 2014. So, um, 2016 i moved to pittsburgh and uh went around to some schools in the area but i mean stout just felt like home they welcomed me i mean i think one of my first interactions was with mike wilkins and and he's like yeah he's like yeah man make sure you go and like roll that at, at all the gyms <laughs> you know <laughs> knowing that like i was gonna end up there and that's exactly what i did uh, i signed up at, at stout and um you know that was my first taste of like western pa wrestling right because i think one of my biggest regrets uh was was never wrestling i could remember when i was like four or five years old uh i came to my dad and i was like hey hey dad i i think i want to wrestle he's like you know it's during basketball season right and i'm like oh no nah, screw that <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play basketball so it's like my my biggest regret was when i was five and chose basketball over wrestling <laughs> although you but, probably um, had some good memories from basketball it's always hard to to pick and choose when you're when you're that young so what's it yeah, been yeah, like sure. what's it been like trying to learn the wrestling the grappling side because mm -hmm. you know this is one of the reasons why bjj is bringing in things like combat bjj to try to you know create more uh, mma friendly no gi itself is an mm -hmm. mma friendly jujitsu versus just gi so wh what has it been like kind of you started with pure jujitsu it sounds like because obviously mm -hmm. Shout out to Matt Wheeler for just plucking you right from CrossFit and bringing you over. And also it's a huge deal for you, you know, like, like that experience could go one of two ways. You get tapped out 12 times in five minutes. You either never go back to BJJ and think the rest of your life, that little guy, what was he doing? You know? Or like you, it shows the mental toughness to quit something you were already doing and join something that was obviously way above where you were at the time. So what's it yeah. been like? Because the Wilkin brothers, obviously, the, the whole stout is not only great at jiu-jitsu, they're also great at wrestling. So what's it been like learning uh, the wrestling component in addition to uh, jiu-jitsu? Well, you said it right there, and, and it, it starts with Warren, right? Warren Stout. I mean, he, he was a wrestler at Lehigh. Um, and, then, and then the Wilkins brothers, and I mean, especially Mike, he's just, he's just really helped me hone my, hone my wrestling, wrestling for jujitsu skills is what I'll call it. I'm not going to go jump into a wrestling turn. I get slaughtered, but you know, throwing submissions, uh, I'm chomping at the bit. Um, and really you, you kind of don't have a choice here in, in Western PA other than to wrestle. Right. So it's like, you're drinking, you're drinking water out of a, a fire hydrant. Right. So, um, you know, just getting thrown into the fire and, and, asking questions. Hey, how do you, how do you set up a shot? How do you actually do a single leg? Right. I can remember eight years ago, like, you know, what is this stuff? What, you know, so, um, working with those guys, um, and, and really kudos to them for putting the time into, to me, um, who, you know, I brand new, brand new to wrestling. You know, I just, I wanted to, I wanted to do jiu-jitsu. I wanted to chase submissions and all that. And they really taught me, like the essence of, of how, how important wrestling for jujitsu is. And, and so, you know, I, I've focused on that and um, ask Mike Wilkins, he'll tell you, I got the best head wheel at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I will ask, I will ask Mike Wilkins. We, we go hopefully, way back. Hopefully Jake a, doesn't see this. <laughs> oh, I'm a, I'm a big, oh, was that a little trash? Was that a little trash talk? <laughs> no, I don't want to give him any, uh, any of my game plan. <laughs> oh, that's right. You don't want to give, you don't want to give your game plan. Well, uh, yeah, Mike, Mike Wilkins is, is, uh, he's hilarious and he's a great coach. He's, he's really best. transitioned incredibly well from being a high level MMA fighter himself with Bellator and CFFC and then coming in, coming into coaching. 
Um, let's let's talk though. Like, how much how much coaching are you now doing? Because I I believe I've seen you. If I if I remember, you know, your handsome face, beard, one beard guy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you come to MMA fights and you're in the corner of some fights. I'm pretty uh, sure. Not in MMA, but in a lot of jujitsu. A lot of jiu um, Okay. So what's yeah, it like yeah. on the coaching side of things? So um, I, I really think that's where, like, I love competing. I love training. I, I love growing my, my jiu-jitsu personally. But I think that's really where I'll leave my mark in jiu-jitsu um, is coaching. Um, it, just, to, just to be able to, you know, have that interaction with an athlete that's, you know, it, I mean, this is, this is stress under duress. Right. Mm -hmm. And to be able to like communicate with an athlete and have them hear me and, and, and perform, you know, the moves that I want them to do. And, and even like, even outside of competition at really honing in on strategies and game plans. Um, it's, it's incredible. You know, I think it's, it's, it's what I'm most passionate about. And what what belt level, if you're doing the belt side, I know you're obviously doing this for Nogi, and there mm -hmm. are some gyms, I would assume, Stout is still very much a gi-oriented belt program, but there are some BJJ programs that are focusing more on like a Nogi ranking or mm -hmm. however that is. So wh where are you belt-wise? What are some goals that you have? I, I'm, I mean, I remember Mike, you know, what, years ago getting his black belt and kind of that's a huge accomplishment. Is that something you're mm -hmm. working towards? Do you see this going up against Jake Lowry, who's obviously a big time guy as sort of a good hurdle to kind of increase your belt? Because I know some gyms belts come from not only experience and skills, but also competitive success as well. Yeah. So uh, I got my brown belt during COVID. It was June, 2020. So, um, you know, the next match is always my biggest match and that's Jake Lowry. Right. So, so mm -hmm. it, it's not only a hurdle, it's in my head, the biggest challenge that, that I've ever faced. And, and that just like pumps me up. Like, I can't wait to go out there. I can't wait to get my hands on. I'm like, no disrespect to Jake, but I'm gonna bring it boy. I'm gonna bring it. Hey, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> I, think that's, I think what's, what's great about BJJ is, there can certainly be, I mean, it's, it's still a, a very physical versus physical unarmed combat. Um, mm -hmm. and, but, but it does seem in, in the BJJ mindset, and that's what's so great about what Sprawlenberg is going to bring, is all MMA is about testing yourself. But because there's eating knees to the face and stuff like that, the trash talk gets a bit much. Whereas in BJJ, it, you can still talk trash if you want to. But what it comes down to is it really is a skill versus skill. You're trying to compete. You're trying to, to test your skills. And BJJ has its own. It breathes a little differently than MMA. You know, the pace is yeah. a little bit different. Um, and it's super exciting for people that are used to just watching MMA. I really think starting to watch BJJ. And what's cool about this format in the cage, sort of single matches, not tournaments, is I think MMA fans can can – experience it a little bit more like what they're used to you know mm -hmm. it, it's not just it can be a little tough for an mma fan th to you know go to a naga tournament and there's 30 matches going on all over the place and there's no announces there's no there's none of that like pressure i, I think what sprawl and the bird is going to bring and i'm sure you're excited about this is the walkouts and the walkout songs and it is it's going to be yes. a full experience because it's going to be a full cage environment mm -hmm. just for bjj Absolutely. I mean, it, it, you know, can't thank 247 enough to, to, for bringing, you know, BJJ to Pittsburgh on this, this sort of level. I mean, the main event, PJ Barch and Dante Leone, like we're going to get national attention and the whole nation is going to see that Western PA Jiu Jitsu is, is at the top. I mean, I'm telling you, like everyone's talking about going down to, to Austin and, and, and out in California, man. I'm telling you, when those guys come here, it's a different style. It's rough. It's tough. A rough and tumble, man. It's 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 fun. And I love like, you know, being at the tip of the spear of that. I, I I want tough matches. I want those guys to go back to Austin. I want those guys to go back to California and go, damn, these these Pittsburgh boys, they're you know, they're iron. Well, there you go. And uh, you know, iron Mike. 
uh, Iron Mike Tyson, but no, it was, um, hold on. Mike Wilkins was Iron, Iron City. I, I got I, corrected. I, uh, Iron City Mike Wilkins, yeah. Iron City Mike Wilkins. So there That's it is. It. Fucking X. Let, you know, you just said about uh, a little bit ago, we were talking about you being 282 out of mm -hmm. breath within the first 45 seconds. That allows mm -hmm. me to segue perfectly into the fact that this is an eight minute, well, submission only. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's whatever length of time, but it is an eight minute gap. What are your thoughts? At 195, you're big and strong, Jake. Larry's big and strong. Mm -hmm. We expect a very ferocious pace. Where's your cardio at now that you're going to be at 195 and not 282? What? Where's your <laughs> confidence level? Because for people that are used to MMA and used to those breaks and seeing yep. the breaks and the fighters getting those breaks, even in wrestling, that happens every three minutes. Uh, you know, unlimited, or in this case, it, it goes as one period with a limit. It's a different level of cardio. So what are your thoughts on the cardio and the pacing of this eight-minute match? Yeah, to tell you the truth, man, I, I would love to go out there and have uh, no time limit sub only. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, that was that was almost 10 years ago that I was, you know, fat and sloppy. So, you know, I've got my cardio up since then for sure. Um, you know, and the guys at the gym, they put a high pace on. We have tough wrestling practice. We have tough jujitsu practices. Um, you know, I'm – you go with with somebody who's you know 250 and and who's really strong and you know cranking on your head and trying to wear you out and then you go against the guy that's you know 160 170 who's just trying to spin around you so you got to be kind of ready for both and your cardio has got to be up there so i'm ready i'm ready and we still got what six weeks sure yeah and i yeah. think it's it's going to be very exciting to see what happens in the sub only environment with the eight minutes uh there's a lot of time to work in and out of positions i mean that's what's going to be mm -hmm. really cool about this i've i've seen have you had experience i know the good fight which is out more towards philly but i i know there are mm -hmm. still some sub only um completely unlimited i've seen sub only unlimited matches go 45 50 minutes i saw mm -hmm. heavyweights that went over an hour and a half but they did take a breaks like on each other like you could hear them hey can we hang out for a little? <laughs> and so that was we were kind of at some point like but you know the heavyweights they just they, they ended up getting a submission but about you know they, they started taking breaks in the match but aside from that yeah. have you done have you done uh sub only tournaments where it truly is unlimited yeah like you said i have done those good fights it was when i was in connecticut they were uh, uh they were real popular out there and even mm -hmm. uh the gym out in connecticut they did um it was the New England submission grappling. I'm missing a word here, but but that was uh, truly unlimited time limit. That doesn't make sense. That was truly no time limit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but then even, you know, I got a great crew on uh, Tuesday and Thursday mornings where we'll shut the clock off. We'll mm -hmm. just roll, you know, so I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. just amped. I, I am. I am. I keep saying it because I'm amped. You know, I'm amped to be inter interviewed by you. I'm amped to, to, you know, be fighting Jake. It's funny because that that uh, that fight out in Cincinnati on Limitless, um, Isaac Greeley, owner of the Mat Factory, right? He uh, he drove. Jake sat shotgun, and I was in the back. We were in the same car, so like, like I have mad respect for Jake. Um, his his MMA career thus far, and I mean. The, the potential for him to to go, you know, big time and take take his MMA career to the to the next level and the next level and the next level. I mean, it's you know, it's right there in front of him. So I respect the hell out of him. I like him as a human. Um, just unfortunate that we got to fight each other. That's it. It is what it is. You know, we'll we'll stare each other down at the weigh ins and then we'll we'll you know, we'll dab each other up uh, after we after we have the match. Well, I think I, I can't remember a more uh, an interview where my um, interviewee has smiled as much as you. I mean, you truly <laughs> are a, a very effervescent personality. It's been oh, man. incredible having you on the show. If people aren't already excited, you mentioned the main event, but top to bottom, Sprawlenberg is going to be absolutely um, must see. Insane. How about Dempsey versus Brad Schneider? You yeah. kidding me? Oof. Oof. It's a, it's it's, it's going to be it's incredible. And what's what's fun is you being you know jujitsu is your is your sport. It's your passion. 
I think that's that's what's kind of cool because in the MMA world, people get excited about potential matchups all the time, but it can be easy to forget that in BJJ, the same thing happens. You get excited about potential matchups. Oh, what if this guy or, you know, this guy, that's actually what led to MMA in the first place, gym versus gym, except they started mixing styles, mm -hmm. but it's kind of always been that way. You know, uh, you mentioned being in, being in the, in the car uh, with, with the, the owner and the head coach of the mat factory, Isaac Greeley. I mean, he, at his age, is still one of the absolute best winning, winning high-level BJJ black belt tournaments. I mean, so it really does show, and that's one aspect of BJJ competition. There's masters levels. There's guys in their fifties okay. and sixties still doing tournaments. Still, and so it's it truly is a lifelong um, martial art that, it, that that you can start at five or six and go all the way up. And so, in many ways, those those lifelong friendships and um, it also is a is a real indicator of the type of person Isaac really is. Everybody has always wow. said positive things about him. Even though the gyms face off, I've heard over and over again that he cross trains everybody. He's happy to have whoever is is in the area that wants that wants to train together. So so let so let me tell you. Um, as soon as two four seven announced uh, me and Jake's match, he texts me and he goes, "Hey brother." They just announced uh, your match with Jake. So pumped for it. Get out here and train with us. <laughs> like, uh, like who, who does that, right? Now, of course, I wouldn't train at the time when, when Jake's there. But, like, just he's just such a, such a great human being, um, you know, all around. All he wants to do is help people. All he wants to do is help people succeed, help people win. Um, and that's, you know, on and off the mat. And it shows. It shows – you know, you mentioned it. All you hear about Isaac Greeley is how good of a person that he is. And, and, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people can't all be in on the same lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, well, so that there's... came out a lot. That came out a lot with him being so far the first and only 247 Hall of Famer, um, 247 mm -hmm. Fighting Championships. And, of course, Chris Dempsey, you mentioned him. Chris Dempsey did sort of the the speech you know the in, induction speech and mm -hmm. he gave even a little bit more details but yeah i i think it, it's i think shout out to 247 ryan milton for putting isaac yeah. Ray in as the first because he really even though he doesn't fight mma and obviously now um it, but he's really built what allows pittsburgh to be such a success with with the the gym you're at um stout and all the other ones he's really yeah. built the culture of what MMA can really be or BJJ or grappling and all the cross training, how the gyms really support each other. So that's what I love about Pittsburgh. And I mean, uh, Isaac and Warren have really spearheaded that, right? The cross training between gyms. It really is community over competition where you still have these, you know, am I allowed to swear on here? Yeah, I mean, if you really want to go for it. <laughs> well, I mean, you still have these bullshit gyms that are like, you can't cross train. If you're going to go out to another gym, you can, you know, Done. you can leave Done. your, yeah, yeah. You can, you can end your membership now. And that's just like, that's so selfish. That's not what like true martial arts is. Right. You know, you want to get, you want to get uh, as good as you can at as many skills that you're interested in. And the only way you're going to do that is to branch out. Right. And, and from day one, from me walking into stout and Mike Wilkins going, go try every gym it was such a, such a sigh of relief knowing that I'd be at a place where like, I'm not handcuffed to just training here and, you know, having just these coaches that only have their styles of teaching and their styles of jiu-jitsu. I can go anywhere I want to. I just love it at Stout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously yeah. you're, you're a big time representative of Stout from your attitude and your pleasantness as well as your coaching. Uh, which we'll talk about, you know, in the future as well, because there's a whole sport of coaching, you know, like mm -hmm. you said, to be able to yell things in to an athlete who's under stress, under pressure, and, and it be useful and usable, that can be a transition because a lot of coaches, uh, you know, it could be a struggle in the beginning because you think, well, this is what I would want to hear, but it really has to be what, what that particular athlete needs to hear. Sometimes mm -hmm. coaching is about, you know, relaxing or breathing sometimes coaching yes even though you want to say a a, a move a submission sometimes you know in jujitsu or in mma it's more about the person's experience 
than just about a move. And then once they get that confidence, then the moves can come. Or sometimes it's the opposite way. Sometimes it's all technical and that's what they care about. And it's not so much about, hey, you can do this. You got this. It's more technical. So there's a lot of different ways athletes need to be coached. So there's a whole world of, of the coaching psychology out there. Yeah, definitely. And understanding uh, your athlete's game plan, right? Saying, hey, we've got back exposure, knowing that, oh, back exposure means I'm going to do this to take the back. And then once I'm on the back, I'm going to set, you know, mm-hmm. all that stuff or whatever it may be. Just understanding that your your athlete, having that relationship with them, it's uh, it's really, really cool. Well, that does make a lot of sense. It, it goes towards what coaches actually have to consider and think while they're coaching, which is really exciting. Uh, Sprawl in the Berg is going to be absolutely incredible. This is where I always Nuts. say for people to buy tickets to both events, Sprawl in the Berg yes. 1 and Brawl in the Berg 17, for, directly absolutely. from you, from a fighter or from a gym. A lot of times gyms will have tickets or fighters directly. If for some reason people are not able to come to Monroeville Convention Center, the pay-per-view I always try to throw out there is also, you should also be checking Tanner, um, you know, the name. So that way everybody knows kind of who's pulling in who. And also it gives you credit, which, which can always be helpful. So if you have some Connecticut friends still <laughs> you up there, this is a shout out to them uh, to get either the 247 Live year uh, subscription or just the pay-per-view yeah. 247fighting.com. It's been an absolute blast having you on, having you on the show. Uh, thanks so much. My for honor. Being- short and getting out here can't wait to see what you what you and jake lowry bring to the table and how exciting that matchup is going to be thanks so much you've been listening to luke payson from mma fancast with first time guest of the show tanner hall my man luke appreciate you this is awesome what you created keep it going buddy can't wait to see you i appreciate you thanks so much have a good one you too all right you got it all right bye